Sorry if you hear the vacuum in the background. So it's time to spin. I'm on my own back. It's really hard to do. That donkey. What are you doing? Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. Dinky, look, he's right there. My buddy. This is the channel where I document my fi my path on my fiber arts journey. <laughs> I weave, I spin, I knit. I'm probably gonna try new things in the future. Um, I started to do some felting with a friend, but we didn't finish it, so I don't know how that's gonna happen. I do so, I do other stuff too. And sometimes you see little snippets of it and my life. <laughs> such as it is. So a few weeks ago, probably like two weeks ago, I did a short and it was on TikTok and it was on YouTube picking something from my fleece closet, which is actually like right behind me um, across from the stairs. It's right here. No, here. Anyway, I went and picked three options out because if I just like let people vote on everything in there, I would get like one vote for everything and it's too hard. So I picked three options out. Um, you guys voted and let me tell you, let me show you what you picked. You picked this gray fleece. It looks awful really, but it's not. That I bought years ago. I found this lady on Craigslist. This was before, well, Ravelry was getting going. It was going, but it wasn't as big of a thing as it is now. I found this lady on Craigslist who had a hobby farm and it was, um, it was Corydale and Romney sheep and she had like let them breed a little bit and stuff. So I'm going to show you one lock. So she literally sold me one or two shearings of her entire little fiber flock for like two bucks a pound or something. I ended up buying, I think it was like seven fleeces. She just wanted to get rid of them. She had been storing them. And so I bought them. <laughs> and I brought them home to our old house, put them in the garage and just washed them one by one. And they have been, they moved with me. Uh, well, parts of them did, because I have spun good amounts of them also. So I looked at this bag, which is what I showed you guys. This bag right here. I don't, it's from Harbor Freight. <laughs> this is a bag I pulled out of the closet. But after I pulled it out, I took a good look at it and I'm like, I think I have more of that. And I have spun some already. I thought I'd show you this fiber already spun. I blended this with some silk. Basically, they call it waste. I don't know, you know. But um, I blended it with these colors from like, I say from like the... I don't know, I'd say the 90s, you might say the 80s. I can see, I think you could make a case for that as well. But they reminded me of like all the wind suits <laughs> that got worn in the, well, in the 90s. And I guess the 80s as well. But uh, it's it's really nice. It's very cushy and I've never used this. I, I think I spun this before we moved here and moved this here too. <laughs> anyway, that was on my hand spun yarn shelf. I just gave away two giant bags of hand spun to different people that I just wanted to make them smile and make their day. So I made room on my shelf for hand spun yarn. That's always a good thing. After I saw this, I was like, wait, don't I have a bunch more of that? I think I do. So I went into my closet and hunted for it. I have all this of the same fleece. This is a chunk from each bag. I mean, this is the same fleece. So I'm going to combine it all and we're gonna just go ahead and start prepping it. So I am gonna blend this with Sari Silk the way that I did that last tank. I, you know what, I should weigh this. Hang on, let me get my scale. It's washed also, I should have said that. I don't allow it to come into my stash until it's washed. That is like a moth protection thing really any kind of bug that might want to come in on it. We can talk about that sometime if you want, but I do not allow it to come into my stash until it is washed. It goes in quarantine. In this house, it goes in quarantine um, on this three season porch that we have. I really need to get to those by the way. So as soon as it's a little bit warmer out, we'll be washing fleece. 
two pounds, 0.4 ounces. So that is actually perfect. And I don't know yet which, um, which sari silk I'm gonna blend it with, which color. I like the tweed that you get when you do it. So I guess we can talk about that once I'm ready to start carding. Um, when I do that, I'll add the sari silk as I'm carding, and then I will split my bats so that it all comes out. I mean, it never comes out perfectly even, but it'll be more even. So we'll talk about that during the process, but for now. But first, before you run it through a carter, especially like wash fleece like this, you need to pick it. If you try to run like this, through a carter, it, you're just making it so hard for yourself. It's gonna go come through all clumpy. It's gonna take so many passes to get it nice and smooth. It isn't worth doing that way. It's better if you just go ahead and pick it. So I have done that before on my channel, but if you wanna join me for a little bit, we're gonna be picking. If you're ever gonna do this at home, one thing you need to know is like, even if this looks so clean, it looks pretty clean, right? I mean, that looks pretty clean. It's got dirt stuck, particularly the dirt will get stuck in the tips. Um, and then when you pull it apart, cause you're picking it, the dirt will just start coming out. You'll see it. You need to pick it over something. I have some cotton tarps that I use sometimes, but this time I'm just gonna pick over an empty box and I'll put the picked locks into a paper bag. Then I'll cart them straight out of the bag. Two pounds usually won't fit into one of these bags, but we'll just see how it goes. I can always get another bag, right? It took me a little while to clear the decks so that I could start this after you voted and I felt really bad. I was like, I need to hurry up and get through that. These poor people voted and now they're like, okay, Trish, what did we, what was that for? Like, get moving. So let me show you. Last year, 2022, at the Michigan Fiber Festival, I bought a Jacob fleece from Sweet Grass Jacobs in St. John's, Michigan. <laughs> there is also a St. Joseph, Michigan, and for some reason my brain always has to like think through for sure, where is that farm? I separated it into three different colors, and then I carded the color separately. So this is the darkest color that I got from that fleece. There's four bats of each, it just worked out that way. I did not weigh them, so I don't know how even they are, but. So I have four of this color, okay. Four of this color. So let me just show you next to the dark one. It's a big difference, right? And then four of this color. So all three, hang on, wait. All three of these colors came from one fleece that I bought. We should see, let's, um, let's weigh this bag. This was washed as well. One pound, 14.5 ounces. So almost two pounds carded right here. I had to get through this. It was separated, but I hadn't carded it yet. And I needed to get through it so that I could set it to one side and then work on the fleece that you voted on. These three are gonna get spun for I think a color work sweater. I thought it would just be really cool to do natural colors, no dye, um, three different colors from the same fleece and make a sweater from it. And this is plenty for a sweater. I was thinking that I was going to do that same thing that I did with that yarn I showed you from this fleece is blend some type of sari silk or silk waste in. But part of my mind is saying that I should dye it after I spin it. So I guess I can think about that while I get the fleece picked. But feel free to weigh in if you think I should dye it or blend it with the silk or dye it and then blend it with the silk. Oh, maybe I should dye it and then blend it with the silk. Oh well, whatever I decide, don't worry, I can always do the other thing later because I have plenty of fleeces in there. <laughs> We've gotta get through some this year and we're going to. It's only March and I'm already going getting through one and I got through this one already, all prepped and ready to spin. So I'm doing the thing, people. Get off my back, okay? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm on my own back. It's really hard to do. We better get picking so we can get carding. While I'm picking, there's a couple of things that I want to just talk about with this fleece in particular, and then also point out. 
So the tips on this fleece are very, very tender. I had kind of forgotten until I started picking and there were also a lot of shortcuts. I'm about to pick some out and you can see that it's just like this little clump from having the shear pass over it twice and get a little bit more of the fleece the second time. So while you pick, it's really good to remove them. And then when I pick locks, I usually grab them from the side, I guess. Yeah, you'll be able to see there. I grab the lock from the side and then pull them apart. This fleece, again, had very tender tips. And I think if I were to go back, I would probably have removed the tips. I have done that plenty of times before. Just take a scissors and pull, cut them off as you are picking. In a second, you're actually gonna see it's breaking. These tips are breaking. So I pulled that right off and threw it into the bag of waste. And it's just a matter of really taking your time, pulling off any kind of VM that's big that you can take out and watching those tips. And um, I have noticed in the past that colored fleeces get tender a little bit more frequently. I think just as they get bleached, they get more damaged from the sun. It's one of those things. And this particular fleece also had the sheep had lived in an area that had clay in the soil. And so the tips kind of got glued together from wet clay being applied to them for lack of a better word over and over. And they just got, with the tenderness, they would just kind of stick together. And like I said, I would if I was doing this over again, I'd probably go ahead and remove those tips. It would have made it easier, but I'm still really happy with what I got. So I mentioned this was really dirty and I was gonna do this over the box. Look at how much grossness is in there. This is shortcuts. Let's see, you can see some of those right here. There's some shortcuts. And then also some of these tips want to break off. And so what I've been doing is when I find those ones that are a little bit brittle, I just pull them off and sometimes they pull a little bit of a lock with them. And that's why you'll see some of these little knotted up locks in here, giant straw. So this is why I use the box to catch <laughs> everything that falls out of the fleece. And then I don't know how long I sat here, but this is how much I have picked. Uh, I'm not going to go weigh it because I'm going to keep going, but making progress all right two paper sacks this is like a grocery sack it's quite crammed full you can see it's just like exploding out of the top and then this is a shopping bag with the handles i have these two full well let's see we gotta move so the sun is not in front of us you can see how loose it is picked for me this is like the most important step I know it's annoying and it's very time consuming, but it is super important. I was thinking about color for the sweater pretty much the whole time. You can see it's just a very nice silver gray. It varies a little. There's some lighter, there's some darker, but that's it. And what I had said was, will I dye it after it's spun? This is not a good way to dye it. You can dye it in locks and then pick and card it. If I dye it this way, it'll compress and I'll have to pick it again and I don't want to do that. For me, at this point, it's either dye it after it's spun or make a tweed out of it, spin it natural, but I would not dye it myself in this form. There's no right or wrong. If you want to, go for it. I finally settled on a tweed for this and I was thinking about what colors I have available, what do I want to use, and let me tell you how I decided. This is the shelf that has all my yarn on it. You see the other side all the time. And this is like, I'm walking down the stairs, see behind it. So I came around, hi Dinky. And I saw this, I saw this beauty sitting on the table. It's waiting to get a photograph and getting in the, sh and get into the shop. And I thought I have some like very mm, electric blue. I don't know how this is gonna come across, but it's very strong blues. And I was like, I have some electric blue, sorry silk that would look super cool. So I pulled that out of my closet. You're not seeing anywhere near as brilliant as it is in person. I guess I'll try to like fix it, you know, on the video, but it is quite a bit darker and more brilliant color in person. And while I was pulling this out, I also pulled out another one that I really do like, and it is this one. This one is more kind of like a darker aqua, but it has a bunch of different colors mixed in 
and I brought them down and I eventually did decide that my original one that I went for was the one. She's the one. I'm gonna use the Strouch for this and I can blend it on the Carter. Do I'm gonna blend it, get it into bats. I think I'm gonna spin a tiny sample for the end. I'll probably knit an even tinier sample. So let's go. And all these still need to go into the shop. So if you've been waiting for some of the sock yarns from the last dyeing video, some of them are hanging on the wall already. But um, these are just waiting for photos and getting into the shop. Hopefully by the time you see this, they'll be there. I'm sorry, I just really literally have so many things going at this moment. I'm gonna show a couple of examples. I already showed this one. This one is spun of the exact same base, the, the silver gray wool. This is why I use the silk. I really like how bright it pops against the natural colors of the wool but also it stays soft. A lot of times if you use wool neps, they're felted a bit and they're like little hard little nubbies and I don't really want that in a lot of my yarn. Sometimes you want the texture, but I don't usually. This one, I believe was the silver gray Shetland. Let's see, did I write on the tag? Yep, it says Shetland. And I actually blended it with silk waste that I'm gonna show you, it just looks completely different, but I it's a silk waist that had different shades of kind of like aqua and silver and white. I blended the exact same one with this Shetland, which is almost black. This is another Shetland that actually came from the same farm, almost black, you can see some white hairs in it. And it is blended, these two are blended with the exact same silk waist. All right, I'm finally at the Carter. This is the Strouch Finest. I've talked about this so many times, it's ridiculous. I am gonna quickly just use my brush for cleaning my Carter. I had some wool kind of like sitting near slash it got on it and I just wanna get it off of here before I start carding something new. It's not a lot. I'm not even sure what the last thing was I carded on this carter. I love this one. It is so good. I have not had the opportunity to try everything. And because I'm honest, <laughs> um, it is a lot harder to find a, a company that would wanna work with me motorized this is the best carter i've ever had that's why i've had i don't know two or three other motorized carters and this one has never gone anywhere but those have been changed out i just really really love it everything will go through here three times so my first time through i really just want to kind of like put, break apart the fiber again and when i say break apart i don't mean rip the fibers but like loosen it separate it start it getting organized and then i will also add the sari silk in layers but it will look super chunky it's going through three times so what will happen is i'll run everything through that way pretty similarly but i won't stress a lot about getting like the perfect amount of silk in each bat or the perfect amount of wool it doesn't matter and then however many bats we get say we get eight bats that's probably a safe number it could be even less um we'll take them separate them into eight pieces and then each of the next set of bats will get one piece from all eight and then we'll do that all over again and that will help us get a really even blend for a sweater spin so the silk will be pretty even throughout I don't need it to be perfect. That's, you know, not really the nature of hand spinning, but I do want to get it kind of even. So there's no patches where one hank clearly has way more in it. I'm going to speed this up, of course, because it's going to be super boring to watch. Maybe not. Everybody likes to watch the magic, right?
off, but I first want to show you, remember how full the, the paper shopping bag was? This is where we're down to already. There's probably only two more bats in this bag, I'm guessing. Okay, so we're gonna come in close on each pass. This is what it looks like after the first pass. Not that smooth yet, not that uh, blended yet with the silk, but wait till we get to the second and the third. I'm gonna get through the whole first pass, come back, and then we'll work on the second pass. I got through the whole first pass. I think I have seven, but I may have lost count because, you know, it's just hard to keep track. So let me see, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last one was pretty small, so I'm gonna try and go ahead and combine them all into eight. What I'm gonna do is actually sit here, rip each bat into eight pieces. I'll do them all in half, and then I'll set half of each of them aside in a pile, and then just work with the first half and get them all ready to card again, and I'll show you how I do it. With all of them, I'm gonna take each one and just try to rip it in half and I'll set the first I'll set one half aside of all of them because it's just so many to work with at one time okay so that's half so I'm gonna do it again twice more so that I have one eighth of each of these bats in a pile. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. Each one goes in half. Okay, and now I'm gonna shove one of those aside and each of these sections just gets split in half. And then those, that's our final split. So that means this is a one eighth of each bat and I was thinking about it I think I'm gonna go ahead and run these through on the classic because I can do a slightly larger bat on that and the first time really breaks the fibers up and kind of like gets out the little nits and tangles and things out and the rest is really just for blending and smoothing so I think it's gonna be fine we're gonna try it so I'll take each one spread it out widthwise some people like to pull them off, pull fibers off and run them through sideways. I am trying to get something smoother, so I don't wanna do that this time. And honestly, if I feel like it needs a fourth pass, I will just do it. But I don't think we're going to. I think three passes is gonna be just perfect. And that is what we want. Look at that. This is the second pass. You can see it's really starting to break the silk up and just disperse it in the gray. It is gonna be so awesome. But you can also see that it is getting smoother. One more pass should do it, but if I wanna blend it more, I'll do four. We'll, I'll let you know, of course. I'm gonna do this that whole second pass and then we'll get on to the third. Good morning, it's the next day. I am doing the splitting and the last pass through, I think. I thought I would just quickly finish this up. 
and I will show you what the final bat is going to look like and then I'm going to spin a small sample, knit a small sample and decide if I want to add another color or if I'm happy. John is loving this. He thinks it's so super cool. I really do like it. I think I'm going to like the finished product. I just have to sample it to make sure it's perfect. <laughs> Yay! Last one. Well, for the first bat. So there will be seven more. I'm going to spread this out a little bit better. Especially that right there. I want it to break up on its last pass through. I finished. A spin on my Hanson yesterday. All right. All right, you ready to see the final? If I can, this bat is so fluffy, I don't even know if I can store it this way. So this is the final bat. It is nice and smooth now. Um, gosh, it's so hard to believe how it transforms over just three passes through, but it, it always does, it never fails. And um, I'm, get, I'm just really excited to start spinning this. This is the final result on the bat. I did really forget how tender some of these tips are, how much of them are tender. So you can actually see right in this frame, right there, these tips are still breaking off a bit. In this part, the sound is messed up because my little robot vacuum is running but I'm just ripping off a section of the bat to spin for a sample. We are going to be trying long draw first. We'll see how it goes. I may have to loosen it. And when I say loosen it, I mean just kind of like spread it apart. Also stripping it down thinner and thinner will loosen it. almost have enough for a good sample so just a little more this is what the single looks like it's got some texture that is what I wanted so that's good That is a better view of what the single is looking like. Kind of pretty actually. It is catch catching on my Fitbit. I should have taken it off. Hang on, let me move the loop above it so I don't have it catching anymore. Cause it was like below back here and it just kept catching on it. So that'll be better. So that's the whole sample applied. I'm gonna go ahead and knit us a, a small swatch so that we kind of know how this yarn is. And actually that'll help me decide for sure if I'm gonna do a three ply or two ply. All right, I'm coming in super close. This is my swatch. That's all the yarn that I spun for a sample, but it is enough for me to tell that a two ply is gonna be perfect and that I like it and I don't wanna add another color. So I'm gonna get going spinning this. 
I need to warp my loom first. And then I'm also gonna spin the Paradise Fibers box for March really quickly before I seriously start spinning this, but that will not take long. You guys picked a winner as far as fleeces go. Uh, no, I won't see you Sunday for the live. This coming Sunday, April 2nd, I believe. Maybe I should look at my calendar, hang on. Yeah, April 2nd. I will not be here because we are having a really busy weekend. We have something Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I don't wanna have to rush back for it. It's a family, like, kinda get together things. Thank you for picking this fleece. You picked a great one. I think I would've liked them all, though, let's be real. Like, I'm kinda fickle like that. And I appreciate you hanging out with me today while I process it. It's gonna make a really cool sweater, and now it's out of my fleece closet, so I, does that mean I'm gonna buy another fleece? I already did. <laughs> I appreciate you all so much. You make my life better, and thank you for being here. I will see you soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.